I'm glad you've joined in looking at this uh, second lesson that we have in the Gospel of John. I just, before we start, want to remind everybody that God has made a way for us all to have eternal life. Jesus said, to enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. I hope I'm talking to the few, and if you're not one of the few, I hope you're going to become one of the few before we're finished. So we were looking at how Jesus is the Word of God, and now we're going to move on and look at how He is the light of the world. If we live in the light, we're going to find our way to that narrow gate. We're going to have a light to guide us on that path that God wants us to walk on. Uh, in Psalm 119, it tells us, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's provided all we need to follow him. So the word of God is giving us light that we can see. Those who are in the world that don't know Christ, that don't follow him, that don't seek after him, they walk in darkness. But God, through his word, has brought us a marvelous light. So John, he continues his description of Jesus here, looking at John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness can't comprehend light. It doesn't understand light. And it can't overcome it. Some translations use the word overcome. Nobody's ever turned on the darkness to put the light out. It just doesn't work that way. In the ninth plague in Egypt, uh, God showed his power, that he has power to overcome darkness. In Exodus chapter 10 it says, So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Isn't that a miracle? So we got this one town, it's light as could be, but darkness covered the rest of the earth. When Jesus was being crucified, we see the power God has over darkness. Matthew 27, it says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. So God actually took the sixth hour to the ninth hour, that, that would be about noon to three o'clock our time, and uh, the middle of the daytime, and God put darkness over the land. God has power to remove light whenever he desires. Uh, God actually created light before he created the sun or the moon or the stars in the sky. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night, and evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. So there we go. There you have it. There's light and there's darkness. And what happened later? All the way down in verse 16, it says, this is on the fourth day, God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and evening passed and morning came, marking the fourth day. So it's a little bit contrary to the world's point of view. They like to think that the universe was created first and there was some great explosion like two cars having a total smash up, only it was something greater than that. And life came from it. And we all were created uh, from this great magnificent event out in the universe. And here we are as part of this universe. Well, God made the heavens and the earth. He put it started working on it, and it wasn't until the fourth day he started putting the stars in the sky and putting the universes out there. So uh, it's quite contrary to the way uh, those who don't believe in God think. 
And sometimes we might have some battles over that. I just always tell them, I said, well, you may have faith that, you know, someday you could run out to a car collision and find a computer laying there all put together. Well, I just don't think it's uh, probable, and I'm not much of a gambler. But I do see how we all have life, and God created everything with life. And there's no way that I can understand how people cannot believe that we are a created being. So here we are. We're to believe in the light and walk in the light. In John chapter 12 it says, While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. In Ephesians at chapter 5, uh, verse 8 and 11, it says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So we're looking at light and darkness in this world as those who are walking without Christ, that those who haven't come to know Him as their Savior, that those who haven't allowed the Word of God to penetrate their being and become one with Christ, they're in darkness. And I was in darkness until Jesus Christ came and filled my life and allowed His Word to flow through me, filled me with His Holy Spirit. What a marvelous, marvelous work that is. What a great miracle that is, but it cost a lot. It cost the life of Jesus Christ. All things were created by God, and without God there's no life. In Him is life. It's not by Him there's life, but in Him. That's why we say we have to be in Christ. Without God, life can't even be sustained. Colossians 1.17 says, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Since everything is in God, all of God's creation has life. John 5.26 says, For as the Father has life in Himself, so He has granted the Son to have life in Himself. We can't have life within ourselves, because we're born separated from God. Our life is in Jesus Christ because He is the one who gives life. God made man from the dust of the earth. But you know there was really no life in him. In Genesis 2-7 it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Only man had the breath of life breathed into him. We're special. God has made us his people. Fallen man lives under death and darkness. In 2 Corinthians it says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. Uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church and letting them know that people that don't have the Lord, that don't know God, they're walking around blind. They think they see, but they don't. They think they understand, but they're foolish. The regenerate man, he lives in the light, and he's overcome the second death. And we'll be going over all these passages I've been reading in John more thoroughly as we move along. But we're just trying to bring out how Jesus is the light of the world. In John 8, 12 it says, Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In chapter 12, verse 46, he said, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. The choices we make in this world, they're eternal choices. Those who choose to reject the salvation of God will spend eternity in outer darkness. In Matthew 8, 11 it says, And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. That's us, right? But the sons of the kingdom will be cast into outer darkness. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there's people that should be there, but they rejected it, and they're not going to be. 
and they're going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth. Gnashing your teeth is just screaming, hollering, yeah, yeah. Matthew 25, 30 says, and it said, uh, when Jesus returned and uh, he had these unprofitable servants, he said, cast the unprofitable servant into out, outer darkness. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So they're going to continue to exist. But who wants to exist? I have gone through, watched people that are just passing away and in their last few days they're just there. And I know when they passed away, they went into eternity. And for those who had Christ in them, the hope of glory, they're with Jesus. And for those who don't, they're weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth in outer darkness. It's not a life, it's an existence. Those who choose to accept the salvation will spend eternity with Jesus. Jesus said, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. Again, John is bringing out, Jesus is the light of the world. Psalm 36, verse 9, it says, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. It's not my light. It's not my electricity but it's the light of Christ where I see the light of the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ has paid the price for my sin and I can have eternal life in him. John 8, 12 said, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And in John 14, 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, we've dove into Jesus is the life, covered mostly on how he is the light. When you walk in the light, you have the life that Christ gave you. You cannot walk in the light without the life that Christ gave you. When Adam sinned, we were separated from God. But when Jesus paid the price for the sin of Adam, we were brought together as one in Christ. We became part of the body of Christ for all those who believe, for all those who want to walk with Jesus, who all those, for all those who want that word of God to flow through us and walk in the light. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. I hope you've come to the Father through Jesus Christ.